bringing you the best music from home studios across the world. This is Tatro Radio. What's up, everybody? This is Tatro back with another episode of Tatro Radio, a podcast where we showcase four home studio producers per week. And if you're new to the podcast and you're interested in submitting your music, be sure to head over to facebook.com slash Tatro Music. Send me a message. Say you want to be part of the Tatro community, which is a closed Facebook group. And I'll be sure to send you an invite. The Tatro community is a group of home studio producers from all across the world. And we basically are a collective of producers that all create music from a home studio. And we're just here to help each other out. We've got four great tunes today. And we're going to kick things off with a producer by the name of DH. And this track is called Disco Inferno. Check it out.
All right, there you have it. That's our first track by DH. DH is 28 and from Croatia. That track was called Disco Inferno. And I just really wanted to kick off this episode with this track because it's this really like a club ready, feel good, high energy track. And I really love the use of samples. So DH writes, here's a track of mine made recently sampled from an old disco record and some vengeance samples rounded up. The only synth I used was the sub bass, if I recall correctly, a simple sign. DH says he's been producing for the last six years and he's currently working on finding his own sound. He says he's trying to come up with a sound similar to the slower EDM that's been coming out. He's really appreciative of the simplicity. And that really comes through, you know, sometimes you don't need a ton of things happening in a track for it to be just a great track. And I think this track is very high energy and it's got a lot going on, but it's simple, right? It's not super busy. Everything gels together really well and it's a really great blend of, you know, this is an electronic music track, but it really feels organic because of the vocal samples, because of the percussion samples, and is a really great blend of electronic and organic. That four to the floor feel the whole time really keeps the energy going. What I would have liked to see is maybe a little bit of polyrhythm thrown in there, especially with your uh, that little synth sample. You could maybe change the pitch of that synth sample and also make it maybe play some triplets so that it's not just on the beat. There's some portions where it's on the upbeats and I really like that, but I would really love to see some syncopated rhythms on top of that steady four to the floor. I like the way you play with hitch through the track because it really adds that tension and release vibe. I would be careful about doing too much of up and then down then up and then down because it becomes predictable. I would say if you're going to use that as a device to create tension, keep ratcheting up, keep ratcheting it up, but don't bring it down too soon or else we're going to feel like we're kind of on a bumpy roller coaster. Also, one way to have the track evolve towards the end is to bring in a vocal sample that's a little bit more than just a short one shot. I mean like something like somebody singing over the top, like a high chipmunk style voice sample, um, I think could really bring this track to the next level. Um, I think of Bingo Player's Cry, where they sampled the tune Piano in the Dark. That's a really great example and this track reminded me a lot of that. It's got the same energy. So maybe bring in a more melodic vocal sample towards the end and that can be sort of your piece of evolution from the beginning to the end of the track. Overall, this was a great way to kick off the episode. It was a real feel-good, high-energy tune. Thanks so much, DH. This next tune comes from a producer named No One and is called Last Avenue. Let's check it out. You're listening to Tetra Radio.
All right, and that was producer No One with the track Last Avenue. No One is a 24-year-old producer from Hungary, and he writes about the track. As I told you, it's not a new track. It's two or maybe three years old now. It's a glitchy chill step. I've used a Mr. Ray 73 Road VST, which he notes is free. Hopefully you can link us to that below in the comments so we can all grab that. And an FM8 for the growl bass. Some pre-recorded samples, and I recorded a few percussion samples myself. Honestly, that was my favorite part of this track, was the great glitchy sound palette. And I could tell that you took a collection of different samples, but also your own recorded samples. I especially like the samples that are in reverse. I love when there's glitchy little sounds like that, and you can tell that some of them are rising and falling. It's just a really great palette overall. Great job with that. Couple notes about the producer, uh, no one actually doesn't go by the name no one, he just doesn't have an artist name yet, so he just lets people call him no one, which I think is really clever, so I think you should stick with that for your artist name, because I think it works really well. No one's been making music since he was 15, and he created some house music, concentrated on learning mixing, mastering, and then life got in the way, and I think we can all sort of relate to that. We want to be in the studio as much as possible, we want to be creating music as much as possible, but sometimes jobs get in the way, priorities get in the way, and we kind of have to shelve that for a little while. And Noah's got a goal for himself now, he's got a pretty cool goal actually. While he does know that he's still finding his style, he says, I'm planning to compose a full album in 2017 with 12 tracks, so every month I have to produce at least one track. And then goes on to say, if you have any tips or advice about this, I'd be happy to hear it. My main advice is just produce every single day, try to create one new musical idea every single day, and then set out a plan for yourself. I think you could probably do more than 12 tracks in 2017. As producers, we hold ourselves to too much of a higher standard than pretty much anyone else would. We're alone in our home studios most of the time, making our own music, and what tends to happen is we become overly critical of ourselves, and we try to fix every little nitpicky thing in our mix, when sometimes just producing new stuff, releasing constantly is the way to go. Because you know that the recordings you created when you were younger were obviously not as good as the recordings you're going to create now. So if you just get all of that out of the way, you know that your next piece is going to be better. So the constant flow of content is going to make it so all the old stuff that's not as great as the new stuff gets pushed down in the queue, and all the new stuff that's even better is going to be higher up in the queue. So produce as much as possible and get it all to the top of the list so people forget about all the old stuff that maybe isn't so great. But try to let the little things go, especially in a home studio. This track really reminded me of The Matrix, like I can picture Neo and Morpheus walking down the street to this tune and it really created that atmosphere. One thing I noticed towards the end is that the drums and the rhythm percussion have evolved, but the melody hasn't really evolved that much. And what I would suggest you do is take the keyboard roadsy type sound that's in the end playing the melody and have it be up an octave. And that'll add some sort of change because not a lot of your melodic instruments have been in a higher register. They've all been sort of in a mid to low register and bringing that up at least one octave will help us feel like we've arrived somewhere by the end of the track. Overall, awesome track, Noah, and I hope to hear more from you soon. Thanks for the submission. Alright, this next track is by an artist known as Prairion from India, and this song is called Drona. Let's check it out.
All right, that was Drona by Prairion, a 20-year-old producer from India. Prairion writes, I made this track four months back with a random melody and sounds inspired from an ethnic instrument called sitar. And if anybody hasn't heard sitar music before or seen a sitar player, I highly suggest you go check it out on YouTube. I've had the pleasure of being able to see a couple master sitar players live and it's just really awesome music. Usually sitar players play along with a drone, so I'm wondering if that's where the title Drona came from. Maybe you can let us know, Prairion. But I definitely see where that influence comes through in the set of sounds you chose here. I really like the lead in the hook, and I like that it goes from being just a plucky, sign rounded off sound, to now being blended with a saw, distorted, overdriven sound at the same time. It's a really nice texture. Be aware when you're mixing of how other people will listen to your music, because sometimes people are just listening to music through Apple earbuds, and we all know that. And we all mix on probably higher level monitors for the most part, or higher level headphones. But I think it's also important to take those other lower level listening items into account because that's how a lot of people are listening to our music. And what I found when I was playing your track just through my MacBook speakers, was that the kick doesn't come through super strong, but as soon as I put on, you know, a pair of headphones or played it through my monitors, I could hear that nice, big, deep bass drum. But it's something you should account for, and I think you could actually add a little bit more high-end, maybe combine your sub bass with a more, like, high-end slappy kick. That way it can cut through both ways. And I think this track could benefit from a bit of a harder kick and less of a round sub kick at the same time. Another simple thing you could do to make this track a little bit stronger is to sidechain the kick to either one of the synths or to the bass drum. It doesn't have to be super extreme so that everything's ducking extremely underneath the bass drum, but I think it'll help the mix gel a little bit better if things are sidechained to that kick. In the sections that basically function as your verse and you have that dun dun da da dun dun that pattern, I would filter that synth in and out as it goes. That gives us a little more interest as we go because it's basically just that riff happening with some percussion and a filter could add another layer of interest for the listener. The final thing I want to talk about is the sample you use a few times throughout the track which is the sample of a gun cocking. In one aspect you should think about, does using that type of sample really fit the tone of this piece? And that's where I think adding in a harder, tougher kick into the track will make it work. But also think about how you're going to strategically use that sample. Because it's used so many times and it's such a recognizable sample, you want to make sure you're using it to create the best effect in your track. And a sample like this that's so aggressive and so in your face should only really be used sparsely. And I think it's used really well at about the two minute mark, like right before that drop is about to happen. That helps so much with the drama there, but I felt that some of that tension was taken away because I've heard that sample now twice or three times before. So if you used it in that one spot, I really agree with that sample there, but I wouldn't overuse it. I think you did a really great job of capturing your influence and in putting it into a track, and also the melody is so, so catchy. It was definitely stuck in my head after just the first listen. Thanks so much, Prairion. Great track. Our final track is going to be brought to you by a producer called Sensor Glitch, and this track is called Teddy Adventures. Check it out. Bringing you music from home studios across the world, this is Tatra Radio.
All right, that was Sensor Glitch with Teddy Adventures. Sensor Glitch is a producer from the US and he writes, I made this about a year ago and it is my favorite song that I've ever made so far. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. And I have to say, I really do enjoy this track a lot. Thank you so much for submitting it. It's a really clean, crisp mix. When the track first starts, I really felt like it was going to be a different type of track, almost like a new agey atmospheric track, but that first beat drop was just such a pleasant surprise and felt so good, so bravo on that. You do a great job of keeping the listener interested by introducing new material as the track goes on. You do this so well at the beginning of the piece that when we get to the section that starts at a minute 30, it actually drags on a little too long. One thing to keep in mind is that if you introduce a rate of change and you're keeping the listener interested with that rate of change, the minute that that slows down is the minute that the listener starts to tune out. And keeping that rate of change steady throughout the piece is going to keep things moving. And one thing I notice about this track is that it pushes to almost five minutes long. And really look at the arrangement of the track and look at the material and ask yourself, does it need to be five minutes long? I definitely see the Dead Mouse influence on this track, and one thing about Dead Mouse is if I'm gonna listen to Dead Mouse, I'm gonna listen to his radio mix, or I'm gonna listen to the mixes that are, you know, three to four minutes long, because that's just my preference. Some people do like a longer track, but we gotta make sure if we're making longer tracks that there's a reason to listen all the way through to the end. Especially when this is such a high energy pushing forward track, we want to make sure we don't fatigue the listener, which I think you do a great job when like halfway through everything kind of settles in, but you don't want to trick the listener into thinking that your piece is over because they might get in the mindset of being ready to move on. And when everything starts to fade back in, they might be going for that skip button. So make sure there's a reason for the listener to stay if we are going to stay that long. And while this track does have a really nice, clean, crisp mix, it has a really shiny metal vibe to it. Like if I had to visualize this track, it's a nice shiny metal object. I might try to add some other elements as the track goes on. Maybe like something that flows or maybe some wooden percussion. I would try to work that in somehow, especially if you are gonna have a longer track. Introducing some other elements down the road is a way to keep people interested. And I think the next step here is really you should find a singer to team up with because this is such a clean, nice pop track that it needs some vocals on top. And a singer with some really nice lyrics can add another layer of emotion in their already really nice track. Anyway, thank you for submitting Sensor Glitch. This is a really awesome track. If you want to hear more from the producers in our show today, please check the description down below. If you enjoyed one track specifically, let me know in the comments, but more importantly, go let these artists know on their pages that you liked their track. Special thanks to community member Jerry, who is our voice of God on this podcast, and also thank you to the producers who submitted this week, DH, No One, Sensor Glitch, and... Prairion. And if you are interested in submitting your music to the Tatro Radio Podcast, head over to facebook.com slash music and send me a message saying you want in on the Tatro community. If you want to hear more live electronic music performances, tutorials, and get free sound packs, head over to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash c slash Tatro. Thank you so much for listening. This has been Tatro. Have a good one. Homegrown music from the Tetro community exclusively on Tetro Radio.